Okay, gonna try to make this a quick one because this is the uh, second Mako 75. I had a deal where I fixed one, which was that one I fixed first because it had more components in it than this one. But the deal was fix one, keep one. So I fixed that one and was gonna send it back. But then this one, uh, the keep one was missing so many parts that I kept this for another week or so to. Um, look at it, it to uh, match up the parts I needed for this because the schematics in these things uh, uh, is very lacking to say the least it doesn't show what values of the components or or even all the components in it it's, it's like a rough sketch more than a complete schematic um, of it and that's from Mako um, so Mako 75 one tube uh, modulator type box uses uh, M2057 which are hard to get but that's a big bad version of the 8956 LF6 tube um, but they're expensive and hard to find and most people including me just saw a 8950 in it which is a 12 volt uh, 6 LF6 8950s are not cheap themselves but they are cheaper than the uh, M2057s but they don't do as much either so it's kind of one of those you pay for what you get thing. I guess I could convert it to a 6 volt tube and 6LF6 um, um, equivalent. And with the 6LF6 subs, there are a lot of, um, quite a few cheaper subs that a lot of people aren't hip to. But, you know, that's a lot of work. And I'll just leave it alone since I got, you know, 8950s, at least a few of them. So. Mako 75 is a one tube. They made a Mako Super 75, which is a two tube version of the thing. And um, other than the rest of the Makos, this is set up to be a modulator. That's the one tube. You can see the holes for up to four tubes. They use the same cabinet for other uh, boxes like the Mako 200 and 300. I believe use this same case. So anyway, that's all there is at the um, top insides, the transformer and the um, single tube. And then, this ain't pretty, as it was just so empty when I started with it. I just started going, putting in components and going here and there and there to here. And um, so it's kind of like a rat's nest or maze of stuff going all over the place. I may redo it just to clean it up, but anyway, it's working. I may leave it alone, um, uh, depending on you know what I feel and you know what my time is for it. But um, this is a Tetro um, turbo mode, I call it, where it's got the screen voltage, it's got the negative bi bias going in it, and um, it's probably ran Class C, um, a lot of bias and a lot of swing, and it's a very dirty box, but you know it does to do as far as you know giving you that swing and modulation so anyway I'm not gonna get into it too much I've got into them before we gotta turn it on uh, we got it off over here too and let it warm up a minute and hopefully the thing's still tuned up um, pretty basic power switch the standby switch is a three-way switch normally up is uh on and I think uh, preamp on and the center is off or standby and then down is either on or with the preamp on one of them um, up or down was um, operate with the preamp on and one of them was operate with the preamp off I forgot which way was which but anyway doesn't matter this one since it was missing the whole preamp board um, Kia board. I just put a Nomad keying circuit in it. A small little thing. Uh, we zoom in here because this thing is running. Now that little board there is the small little Nomad keying circuit board, but it has no preamp. So this is just a straight amplifier, no preamp or no biamp. Um, SSB switch this adds a delay. I don't know how good this amp would be on SSB with the um, would it be in a modulator um, type box and um, somebody had modded that um, pot there 
as you can see on this one which you know had more pots in it um, there is no hole somebody had did that and they did a variable bias for this is what they added to that but the variable bias when I got it worked I mean working uh, it wasn't as stable as I would have liked it to be so I got rid of the variable bias and moved the uh, tune trimmer which was normally internal and you had to go through the bottom or the top to access it and I just moved it to that point since somebody had already you know tapped it out and you know the hole and all that so basically that's a tune and that's the load even though that one says uh, uh, tune there and you got a little transmit um, light that lights up it glows as you know your modulation glows and you know that's it for that and um, I guess we'll just key her down right there is the 20 watt scale input watts so it's basically a watt and a half going into it talking about two maybe whistling the up four on the mud duck radio and it looks like I left it on peak 200 watt scale it's dead keen about seven and audio 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 playing around a hundred or so um, peak watts audio it probably does a lot less on average you know being class C and all audio 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 isn't that interesting hello 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 20 watts on um, average and 100 watts peak but you know class C modulator like I said dirty but doggone these things are loud okay that's it on this uh, Mako 75 um, fix one keep one and that's the keeper and the um, other ones going back to the um, I guess he wouldn't be a buyer or a seller I guess a seller a buyer no a buyer whatever um, with this buy one keep one deal all right that's it for this one we like Mako 75s dirty or not we like modulators bye